Celeste is a game that's been talked about many times before, but I don't care because I think it's a good game and I'm going to talk about my experience. For those of you who don't know what Celeste is, it's a 2D puzzle platformer released in 2018 developed by the indie group Matt Makes Games. The game features you, Madeline, a determined yet troubled young adult on her journey to climb Celeste Mountain. The game does a good job of showing Madeline's struggles with mental health, such as severe anxiety and self-doubt. An obvious metaphor for these issues is introduced in the second chapter of the game, Old Sight. When you enter a room with a large mirror, a monster jumps out and introduces herself as another part of you, the bad parts of you. As expected, Madeline, and what the community has rightfully named Badeline, they don't get along very well and this conflict is shown in the gameplay in a lot of interesting ways. The section immediately after meeting Badeline turns into a puzzle section, where she's a shadow following every move you make, but delayed a little bit, so you have to be cautious with how you approach the stage. Celeste is a game built upon two base mechanics, a jump and a dash. You get one dash while you're in the air and it resets once you touch the ground. And the great thing about games with simple mechanics is that they can be expanded upon and perfected to absolutely crazy levels. Take the VR game Beat Saber, for example. Right? Super simple. You just gotta match the color and the arrow on the block. Easy! Let's just watch some uh, top tier gameplay real quick. The same thing takes place in Celeste. The first mechanic you'll likely find as you play through the game is what's called a super dash. It's a pretty simple move where you dash on the ground and immediately jump to preserve your momentum in the air. This can be expanded upon with what's called a delayed super dash. You perform a delayed super dash by doing the same thing, but you wait on the ground for just a little longer before you jump for your dash to reset. Then while you're in the air, you have an extra dash that you can use. Delayed super dashes can be used to get through levels faster, and you could probably find some cool alternative routes that you couldn't perform initially. In the very first stage of the game, you encounter what's called traffic light block. After a <clears throat> learning experience, you figure out that you can use the traffic light block to preserve momentum and reach areas faster, easier, and cooler. The many ways you can interact with the traffic light block is pretty cool. You can do super dashes, delayed super dashes, slam yourself into spikes, all the amazing things everyone wants to do. Every stage has one of these unique gimmicks like the traffic light block, which is one of the reasons I love this game. It adds diversity to the gameplay and allows for advanced and high skill mechanics as you interact with the objects. For example, one of my favorite stage elements is kind of similar to the traffic light block, but it only moves when you dash, and it moves to the end of its track in an instant, which lets you use it for a lot of cool puzzles and unique platforming sections. Let's talk about the difficulty of the game for a bit. The game is quite difficult, but it's a good amount of difficulty. You might spend a few minutes on a specific screen trying to figure out the mechanic or do a hard trick, or just be dumb and not know how to solve a puzzle. The game starts you off slowly with a simple obstacle, spikes. You can't make it across these spikes with just a jump and a dash, so... The springboard! Here the game takes the first steps in showing you that difficulty won't come from just tight platforming and properly timed dashes. It comes from interacting with the stage's elements and perfecting the new mechanics it throws at you. If there's a learning curve for this game, I'd say it looks about like this. A decent start with a steadily increasing average difficulty per stage, not too bad. Giving for a satisfying conclusion to the game once you beat it, and you feel accomplished for achieving a feat as great as beating a difficult platforming game. But wait, there's more! B-sides! The B-sides are harder variants of all the stages. You unlock the B-sides by finding a secret cassette tape on a stage usually having a puzzle platforming section with these colored blocks that change states along with the rhythmic music. You get to the end of the screen and you unlock the corresponding B-side stage. If the A-side difficulties look like this, the B-sides are like this. Not too much more difficult. The B-sides expand upon the mechanics that you learned using the same gimmicks but in more interesting and skillful ways. Once you finally complete all the B-sides and make your way back to the first stage A-side, you'll find yourself flying through the stage in minutes compared to your likely hour-long first stage run. That's one of the reasons I love Celeste. It forces you to learn the mechanics in the best way there is. Death. And a lot of it. In my main two files, I have over 16,000 deaths, but more deaths don't mean you're bad at the game, it just means you're learning. But once you do beat all the B-sides, you can take pride in knowing that you've completed one of the most difficult platforming games out there. Seaside! You thought you were done? If the B-side difficulties were like this, the Seaside difficulties are like this! The Seasides themselves 
are pretty short. They only consist of three screens, but oh boy, are these hardy three screens. You know, this is what a typical A-side run looks like. You know, you're jumping, doing your little dashes, hitting the walls, bouncing off, you know. This is a seaside stage. Seasides are as hard as they look, and keep in mind that that was only one of the three screens, and there's a whole section at the end I didn't even get to. There's a lot more I wish I could go more in depth on, like Golden Berries, where if you die once on any part of the stage, you go back to the very beginning of the chapter. But this video is already semi-long, and I don't think I can spend another minute editing. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you can realize how much of a masterpiece this game is.